Okay, good afternoon, everyone. So here we're gonna look at the kinetics lab that we have. So we wanted to determine the rate law of a particular reaction, All right? So the reaction here, again, is a relatively simple iodine reaction. And here we're mixing iodine and peroxide, okay? So really this equation here at number six, is the the acid component doesn't really do anything to this. So it's, it's reaction is too quick to be really counted as part of the experiment. So our rate law that we're trying to look at is right here, okay? So we have our rate constant, the iodine with respect to its order, the peroxide with respect to its order. So the question then becomes, how do we solve for this value, All right? So in this experiment, we had seven sets of data, okay? So as is common in most kinetics equations or problems, raw data is important because it is experimentally derived. So in this experiment, we would have done mixing a couple of solutions. Everything here adds up to 10 milliliters, right? So in run one, it was, you know, four, you know, of water, a little bit of the buffer, some potassium iodide, the sodium thiosulfate, and the peroxide, okay? The starch is the indicator here, all right? And so everything here adds up to a total of 10 milliliters for each run, all right? So essentially we would have mixed, mixed the solution up, gave, gave it a mix, and then started the timer on the reaction. And so the data that was being collected here was the time for each, each run. All right. So essentially the data table here that you are collecting is, or from the experiment, was something like this. Okay. Where we had the time of every experiment. We need to know the concentrations of the, of the initial components, right? The concentration of the sodium thiosulfate, sulfate, essentially the moles of the iodine produced, its concentration, and then its rate. Okay, so the experiment walks you through how to do each one of these. Again, initial molarity of the iodine and the peroxide are dilution values, right? So you have the initial concentration, you have how much of each one is used. So in reaction one, there's one milliliter of 0.3, but then that's diluted to 10 milliliters. Then you have Reaction two is two milliliters of 0.3 diluted to 10 milliliters. So these are just dilution problems. M1V1 equals M2V2, okay? So the initial concentration for the iodine and the peroxide are both done via dilutions, okay? The sodium thiol sulfate constant uh, value, the moles consumed, moles is just the molarity times the volume. But remember, the volume has to be in liters. Okay, so you have liter values for all of these, but since they're all the same, you could just set your equation up. They're always they're obviously going to be the same for all of those in that column. Okay. The concentration or the moles of iodine produced is half of the thiosulfate, thiocyanate. All right. Um, so the values are obviously going to be very similar in those two columns. Right. So as you're looking at them and they kind of walk you through this in this data table here, they talk about how do we get the, the concentrations. OK, so. These are initials. This is from the moles times the volume. This is half of the thiocyanate uh, values and then. Um, the concentration is just divided by obviously the total in our solutions. Okay, or thiosulfate, I'm sorry. Um, so the, the total in our solutions is just 10 milliliters. Okay. Then the rate is the concentration divided by the time. So this is where each one of those would be dependent upon the rate value for each, each uh, run. Okay. So with that, then, once you have that data table, then the question becomes okay, how do I solve for? the rate orders and the rate constant, right? So that's what I wanted to kind of walk through here real quick was to look at how do we do that, right? 
All right. So what I want to do is I want to look at this as and walk through these steps. So we have identified early on that this is our, our rate you know, law, right? So we have the rate, was the rate constant, the iodine, and the peroxide. Okay. So our first step is we want to solve for X by holding the peroxide constant. Okay. Now we can do this by looking at uh, the, our data, right? So I'm going to show you some data here. Right. So the data, so my data table is going to look a little, a little different than yours, only because I have different set of data. Okay. So, but nonetheless, I have time values for every run. Okay. We have the concentrations for each run. And so what we want to do in order to hold the peroxide constants, we want to select from a comparison of two experiments in which we hold the peroxide constant. So in this case, experiments one to four, we're holding the peroxide constant. So we could pick any of them from one to four. Now, generally, the easiest way to do this is be pick one where there's some multiple value, right? So obviously, three and six is double, three and nine, and three and 12. So any one of these would be, be acceptable for, for doing this, all right? When you also select the two runs that you want to compare, you also want to set the higher rate on the top. This will ensure that your value will come out in whole number-ish kind of con uh, values, right? rather than trying to solve the exponential from a fraction, which again, you can do, it's not a big deal, but the it is generally easier to see the results more clearly if you start from a whole number. Okay, so in my experiment, I'm going to pick experiment two and experiment one. Okay, so by picking experiment two and experiment one, okay, I have the solved rate value for each one of those experiments. Again, this is right off your data table. Equals the rate constant times the iodine's concentration and the peroxide's concentration over experiment one, the iodine concentration, and the peroxide concentration. Now, because these two are held constant, their values go away, right? So this divided by this, it just makes this whole value disappear, okay? The rate constant goes away. And so you're left with only the concentration for the iodine, okay? So this leads you to this, right? So when we do our rate, we get, a value of two. We do our concentration here. It's solidified. You can the exponents can be simplified to this, okay? And so it ends up being two x then. So then the question is, what does x have to be to make this relationship true? And so that x has to be one, okay? And again, your data. You can pick any experiment out of, again, those first four experiments were holding the peroxide constant. It doesn't have to be experiment two and experiment one, okay? You could pick any of those, right? The key would be just to put the higher rate on the top so that way you get this whole number. If you put the rate on the bottom, you'd have a fr half fraction, right? But it would still just be a half and a half would, would be your, your value. Right, so the the exponent would still come out the same way. It's just it is more apparent what the exponent is if you're working from the whole numbers. Okay. Step two is we want to solve for we're going to hold the iodine part constant and solve for the peroxide. Okay. Again, it's easier if we choose an experiment where there is some multiple value for the concentration. So I, in my particular one, I chose experiment six and experiment one. In this case, the iodine is held constant in those two experiments at 0 0.03. But the peroxide is, a multi, is clearly a multiple value between six and one. Again, you can pick any of them. It's not going to make that much of a difference. It's just your, your math may be slightly more difficult if you're, it, or let me rephrase, it may be less apparent what your value is 
if you don't pick an apparent multiple from the start. Okay, but here I've picked six and one. Again, this is from my data, not your data. Okay, my data is, is from another experiment, but this is done exactly the same way. Okay, so in this case, my experiment six and my experiment one rate values. Here now, I put the one in there, right? So the one is implied here by not, by not putting anything, but the rate constants go away and so does the iodine, leaving me with just my peroxide. So obviously the 0.18 and the 0.09 makes this 2y. And so then again, uh, <laughs> botched up my own. Equals one. Right. And so then from this, we get our rate law. If it's one, generally we don't write the ones in there. You don't write the one if it is one. So the overall order here is two. So each one is first order with respect to each reactant, according to my, my data. And so then we would want to find the rate constant. Okay. So we're solving for the rate constant. Now you can pick, um, the rate constant can be, can fluctuate a little bit from each run, right? So best practices might be to do all of them and take an average. It depends on how much data you have. If you have a lot of you know significant numbers of, of runs. It's always better whenever we're doing these experiments, it's always better to do more experiments and collect more data rather than just simply picking a single one. But it's not going to really matter too much. Again, the, the rates shouldn't be too drastically different. Right? So the rate value, you can pick one of the experiments. In this case, I just picked experiment one from my for my data. So I just picked experiment one. Okay. So I just resolve this. And right? so the rate constant equals the rate divided by, so just bringing those over, right? Divided by the iodine and the peroxide concentration. So in experiment one, the rate was this the iodine concentration is 0.03, the peroxide is 0.19. Again, they're both first order with respect to one another. I don't write the one in there. And then I was able to solve for the rate constant. Now, because this is a second order, reaction, we need to include the second order rate constant. Okay. And so again, here, when we're talking about what is the purpose of the experiment, okay, you wanted to identify the rate law, identify the rate constant. And don't forget that the rate constant has units. Now for the individual data, okay, for the part B data, or as the report may specify the kinetics post-lab data, there you are given a set of data. Everybody will have their own set of data. And then, so you will take your set of data and you do three graphs and one of them will come out linear. What I'm looking for is what is the order of your reaction? And what is the, the rate constant? Okay, and you would determine that from the graphical data. Okay, and then all of that goes into your report. So it's part A is this is the iodine experiment. Part B is your graphical data. Okay, is your, is your, your data set. Okay, they are different experiments. Okay, so let's not conflate the fact they are different experiments. So it is part A and then part B, uh, as I would kind of mention. And then both of those parts should be mentioned in your conclusion as far as what you, what you got. <laughs>